we are going to pick up with you all crossing through the maze. Uh, let me get a roll of D6s from you all. So I think we already had Darren leap up on top of the maze um, and basically prepare to start like helping everybody over and into the actual maze um, from the side. You all would see as Kruk is easily able to leap up herself and kind of cross into the maze. Um, but you all are able to essentially pass through and with a little bit of help, uh, find your way on the outside of the actual maze. Um, as you all progress through and kind of like skip over this thing that was um, never really too difficult for your adventures to pass through, what sort of thoughts do you all have as you are on the outside of this maze? You've just abducted their high priestess and... Uh, you know Firefinger is just off to the north of you all. Um, more or less, um, probably like a day's travel. And I think at this point you all are kind of pushing towards the evening. Derek is going to suggest that they, uh, they put some distance between them in case uh, Grok decides that he wants to send out uh, search parties once he discovers that his... Uh, Cleric is, or shaman is, uh, missing. Yeah, so we gotta go. They, yeah, he's just they kind of push on into the into the evening and try to put some distance. Um, maybe up towards uh up towards Firefinger, uh, cause that's kind of in the direction we're uh, headed anyway towards uh towards Mesro. And he might ask, um, or no, he can't ask Crook because she doesn't speak, uh, common. I mean, mind. you guys still have, um, Echo who can translate everything, so. Oh, yeah, so I guess Jarek would, would ask, like, kind of Echo to ask, uh, Crook, like, does she think that, uh, you know, once Grok finds her missing, he's gonna, you know, is he gonna send out people to search for her? Yeah, as the two of them kind of translate things back and forth, um, it, it's pretty positive that, yeah, you guys are going to have grungs chasing after you. Yeah, so let's get uh, let's get moving. Just hop back on the boats and continue all, along the bay. Yeah, uh, I think we're on. Boat. Yeah, we're on foot at this point. Oh, we, gotcha. Yeah, I think the the camp vengeance folks got us across the river, but uh, we had sold our canoes back to them. So, preparing to march off into the north, um, you are looking to travel at a fast pace? Are you trying to just keep kind of a normal pace going on? What sort of travel are you all looking at doing here? Trying to move slowly and be stealthily. Like, what are you trying to think? What are you thinking? I would say maybe, uh, Jarek would suggest maybe a, a fast pace to start just to get some distance. And then once we're, once we're a little bit farther away, we can try to maybe go a little bit more stealthily, maybe try and set some, I don't know if, if Darren's able to try and like set a couple false start trails and just try to, after we put some distance, try to, um, camouflage our progress after that. But I would say distance is is more important at this immediate uh, point. Excellent idea. Darren seconds. Yeah, Darren fully agrees with that. So Darren will take some time to make false tracks and try and cover up ours as we go. Uh, let me get a survival from Darren and Jarek. Wow.
Uh, so as you all are pushing off, making these different uh, tracks and trails, and trying to essentially head towards Firefinger without actually leading um, in kind of like a straight line to the actual uh, location you hope to be traveling, uh, you are going to eventually come to a point where, Jarek, you are going to... Let me actually have a perception check from you, Jarek. Uh, so you're just kind of like, you know, blazing your trails and doing a lot of work to kind of hide your actual path. Um, and eventually you are going to kind of um, come to a point where somebody surprises you as you hear from behind um, a person who just kind of says, oh, Hello there. How are you? So Jarek would kind of uh, whirl around, um, looking for a, the source of this uh, voice. And there's just a tiny little old lady who's kind of hunched over. She's got like rags and uh, like lichen kind of growing all over her. Um, looks a lot like what you've seen from some of the different people of the Emerald Enclave. Not necessarily somebody who shows any signs of being like any uh, product of culture, uh, but let me get a insight from you. Good heavens. Yeah, first impression. Definitely looks like somebody from the Emerald Enclave. Um, as far as you can tell, this seems to be a little druid who's kind of off in this little grove and you've kind of like stumbled into it. Uh, hail, Jack's going to kind of be say kind of like very hesitantly. Um, didn't uh, didn't see you there. Uh, uh Jarek, kind of oversharing given his kind of surprise. Uh, about a moment ago, I was just a tiny little creature. It's been a while since I've had the chance to speak to anyone. What is your name, little one? Little one me or little one Taryn? Right now, this is just Jarek. Gotcha. Oh. Uh, Jarek. Uh, this is, um, these are my friends, and he'll introduce uh, the others. Um, I'm sorry, but we are in a bit of a hurry. Need to go where? Uh, north from here. What is to the north that you seek? You are safe here. Hmm. If 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 that is true, may I may I ask um do you seek something from us? Company and someone to speak with is very pleasing. So Jarek's going to kind of glance back towards uh, Darren and Taryn. Kind of give a little little shrug. Does she feel like walking and talking with us? I left my oven on, you see. I hate to be rude, but we gotta... Silence, little one. Don't lie. She's just going to turn around... And kind of like waving her hand, she's going to reveal a hut that's behind her. Would you care for safety? Uh, yeah, Jack's going to speak. Sorry, but I'm a bit hesitant about going with old ladies into a hut when they 
clearly use magic. Last time we did that, I lost a couple of years of my life. That's quite unfortunate. Why did you lose years of your life? Well, you could call it a bad trade for them. For us, it was a pretty good one, so. So why be so hesitant? Why fear those who would help you? Oh, because I don't think they're really meant to help us so much as they just thought they got one over us. And yet you are the better for it? Yes, but once again, their intentions wasn't exactly our betterment. But and you yeah. look for safety now. Safety is always a good thing, yes. And like this, we are kind of in a hurry. While safety is all good and well, we might have company coming for us. Unwanted company. And if I were to lead them to you, Oh, now she's coming in with the threats. All right, guys, I guess we're setting down for some tea. Do you think you can keep them off our off our trail? If, if so, I imagine a bit of conversation and company is a small price to pay. I offer you safety. You have been nothing but rude. Maybe I would lead them to you if you were to leave. All right, all right. I, I, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, tell me where it's going. All right, all right. I might have been a bit rude, seeing as, like I said, the last time we trusted an old lady, it kind of went south, but might be a bit harsh to treat you with suspicion just because of that. So I'll apologize. So just kind of like waving around, she's going to kind of move back to where she's kind of opening her arms towards her hut. Jarek with kind of like an unsure glance back towards the others, but then he'll turn and uh, and move to follow uh, into the hut. Aaron, so she's basically like standing towards it like welcome you in, but she is not walking in at present. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, he'll walk towards, the, yeah, so he'll walk towards the hut, like, kind of following her. I'd like to Are keep you going in, though? Um, is there a door, or is it, like, an opening? At this point, just, like, an opening. Just think um, of it as, like, almost like a, like a beaded entry kind of thing. Yeah, if she's kind of, like, is she, and she's kind of, like, motioning towards, like, is it clear that she's kind of offering for them to go in and Jarek will will move to uh, enter? Yeah, she's almost doing like the uh, airport, like runway guy, like signaling, like straight ahead. You can enter. Darren wants to keep a surreptitious eye out for uh, traps and such. Just in case. Can you make a perception check? Are you walking in behind Jarek? Slightly behind. And then Taryn, are you following? Well, Taryn would be hesitant at first, but not wanting to be left alone uh, alone outside, he, he would follow. So as you start to walk into this, this is a pretty dark hut. It's pretty dark out at this point. And I think you all are in the point where the moon is a tiny little waxing sliver. Um, oh, I've got it hidden, that's why. Oh no, you guys are at a full moon right now. Um, so there's a little bit of a glow like from kind of about um, in the forest itself. 
Um, but as you walk in to this, uh, let me get perceptions at disadvantage from everyone, please. Um, so as you all walk inside, um, you're just going to see a very dark room. There seems to be a lot of different, like, herbs, spices, and things kind of hanging up um, in pretty traditional ways that you dry kind of valuable things that you harvest through the wilds. Um, and at some point here, as kind of the last of you walks in, uh, you are going to hear one simple word. Sleep. Ah, I can't believe Darcy's not here right now. Getting her own medicine used against us. Dewan would like to roll his eyes before he hits the ground. Ah, uh, you guys aren't, like, guaranteed to fall asleep here. Has, when, when she says sleep, like, is her voice sound different uh no it's effectively still the hag's voice this is what we get for trusting old ladies in the jungle we should know better by now <laughs> i mean you guys had no positive result that could come from this the fact that you walk into a hag is always going to be a bad thing yeah, it's just if we leave, she send you know she sends the grungs after us or does something else terrible. There's no winning here. Uh, so what hit points is Taranat? What hit points is Darinat? And what hit points is Jarakat right now? Twenty five. Taran is at twenty four. And Jarek's currently at twenty two. All right, so Jarek, you are falling asleep first. Um, and I need initiative from the other two. You might as well roll initiative for Jarek as well right now. Sure. Can't catch above a 10 today. And I imagine since he's asleep, his um, the initiative advantage wouldn't apply in this case, right? Let me see how that's written, actually. I still have to get used to the fact that you have that. Does it... Uh... You gain advantage on initiative rolls and cannot be surprised except when incapacitated by something other than non-magical sleep. The weapon otherwise awakens you if you are naturally sleeping, which I don't imagine this is, uh, when combat begins. Yeah, so this is basically being surprised by magical sleep. Right. Uh, I mean, I'm fine either way. I'm with the whichever way you want to rule on the, on the initiative. I mean, it makes sense that Probably he wouldn't get the benefit if he's magically incapacitated. Oh, so her surprise round is technically going to be the actual sleep spell, um, which kind of leaves everybody else at reactions once they take their turn. I don't see any reason why anything from having surprise would kind of change this effect. 
other than effectively um, when she casts sleep, all of a sudden you are going to see this creature grows to kind of like a larger size and almost becomes like kind of a lanky looking demonoid um, sort of human, um, far less human looking and far less wholesome looking um, than when you kind of would have first seen her just in sort of like rags and lichen. Um, all of her limbs kind of like extend just a little bit kind of thing where she's much larger, still kind of like hunched over, almost like walking in kind of a crouched position. Um, but this creature is going to kind of close that ground into the group here. Um, and inside of the hut, I think you are all in pretty much a tiny little space here that pretty well limits most everything. Um, but the first thing that she is going to do, I think, is going to... Um, I think she's going to move forward and claw into Darren. And she's going to crit. Read. And she is going to do 15 slashing damage. What a fucking fail of a crit right there. Listen, I'm still not happy about it. Uh, two ones and a two, though, on D8s. That's pretty fucking lucky on your part. That should have been a KO, Darren. One shot. Oof. Um, And then that's going to go to Terran. What do you have in mind as this creature rakes across Darren? Um, he's going to be looking pretty severely wounded at this point. Uh, Jarek is passed out on the ground, and this creature is basically... Oh, wait, no, my bad. There's something else that happens first. Um, you're going to see right after she claws through Darren, uh, the walls and the door of this hut are going to turn to stone. And then it's going to be your turn, uh, Taryn. So let's see, it would take an action to wake up Yarrick, right? Pretty much, yep. The alternative is, is you could, like, do an attack, but you have to, like, attack Jarek with one of them as well. Could do that. I... Ooh, he's... Yeah, this could be fun. I... I need to summon my weapons, though, so... Yeah, I'm gonna do, like... Bonus action to summon my weapons, and then I'm gonna wake up Yarrick. Normally, not with a, not with my weapons, because I do not want to sneak attack him. <laughs> gotcha. Sneak attack and KO your partner. Uh, and then that will take us to Darren. How wide is the space that we're in? Uh, you all are basically in a tiny little space. There's nowhere to go. Well, Darren would like to cast Cure Wounds on himself. Uh, any thoughts of moving or bonus action? Bonus action, I would like to Hunter's Mark this creature Jarek, you have been woken up you are prone on the ground effectively inside of a 
tiny stone uh, hut. What would you like to do? All right, so Jarek is going to uh, stand up um, as he's doing so, reaching for his uh, magical weapon and drawing it forth in the form of a, uh, a scimitar or a kuk- uh, kukri. Um, and seeing this uh, now suddenly, you know, large demonic looking thing and kind of like muttering, like, turn your right. Um, if he can close the gap uh, with his remaining movement, he will slash out at the hag. Yeah, realistically, again, there's not really anywhere for anyone to go. And he'd like to make that a distracting strike. One of his uh, three already died trying to essentially like uh, maybe like whirl her around with the hit to kind of expose her back to the next person. Okay, that one gives advantage on the next attack on them. Uh, the next person, other than me. No save at all, though, right? And doesn't mm-hmm. distracting strike add damage? Isn't there still like you roll the d8? Yeah, I'm just looking for that uh, die. seems pretty stupid that there's no save. I feel like that's constantly one of the things that I don't get about the Battlemaster. Yeah, as long as the attack is made before the start of my next turn. And then just slashing out again. Uh with the second attack. Any maneuvers on the second? Uh, no, but I'm going to use my bonus action to rally um, can't rally myself. I'm going to rally Taryn. Gotcha. So, Taryn, you can gain four bonus hit points. That's Um, terrible. Uh, Just three, actually. Well, no, it should be plus one. Oh, oh, it's already included there. Wait a second. That was a d20 roll. That should be a d8 roll. Oh, yeah, you're right. That's weird. I I rolled the one right next to where it says rally, so I'm not sure why I did a d20. Okay, let me roll a d8 instead. So you're right, four. <laughs> Try to remember that for next time and just roll a D8 rather than using the one on the uh, D&D Beyond. Well, the other thing is, I think under your actions... You actually have a superiority dice thing, and that one actually, we'll see, even that one says 4d8, so it wants to roll all four at once. That's one of those things where D&D Beyond knows the rules, it does not understand how to implement them all the time. Yeah, I tried using that once before I remembered it, and like you said, yeah, rolled the 4d8, so I'm just going to roll d8 manually when I use them. So Taryn has four temporary hit points. Um, you hit her with the distracting strike. How many superiority dice do you have left? Two. Gotcha. Um, she is going to wheel about, um, and strike into, um, Jarek with a claw attack. Um, and I think a 13 misses. Yep, that'll miss. Uh, And then it will go to Taryn. You have advantage with this first attack. 
Yeah, so I'm going to go up and try to hit. A uh, solid strike for a total of 12.25. Doing a bonus action. Yeah, I was just kind of confused by the two. Um, so I couldn't actually get it set up to recognize that it does 2d4 damage. So it has to go off of a weapon, which is it's set up as a dagger. So that's why it knows to do 1d4 plus 4, is because it's based off of a dagger. The modifier is that it does an extra d4 damage. So that's why it's always going to have those like two numbers, like the piercing and the sneak attack are like the things that are added on. That piercing damage, though, that shows up on the second side is just a part of the dagger. Um, I couldn't find a way to actually create a new weapon that's how you can modify weapons to make different attributes with them. Um, I think it's kind of stupid. Again, it's one of those kind of quirks of D&D Beyond. Okay, then I get it. Well, as long as it, so long as it works. So. But yeah, I'm going to bonus action, attack again. So let's see. We're on the offhand attack. Yeah, so the offhand one obviously is right below that. I feel like you kind of know that. Yeah, if it shows up correctly. And also, if you click on the left side of it, it should roll both at once, too. Um, but that one will do seven more. Uh, and I think that would take us to Darren. All right. Are we close enough? I would have any issue using my short bow in here. Uh, you're in combat, it would be a disadvantage. I shall take two strikes with my short sword, then. Alright, so the second one's going to hit for four damage, and you can roll a d6 for Hunter's Mark. And I would like to have, pardon me, I would have liked to use my bonus action to make that a uh, magical bludgeoning. Wait, I can't do that. Never mind. Sword. Um, and that should take it back around to Jarek. All right, so Jarek is, uh, he's starting to feel claustrophobic, too. He doesn't like these tight spaces. He's going to, like, be uh, shouting out, like, Let's out of here, you blasted witch, and he's going to keep uh, slashing at her with his kukri as he's also um, drawing out his short sword to stab into her as well. Gotcha. So just three straight attacks there? Yeah, bonus action with the short sword. Um, and yeah, that's 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 all he's got. He's just hacking away at her. All right, so with that last kind of flurry from you all, um, she is going to be looking rather severely wounded here. Um, as she's starting to bleed like this dark black ichor, um, she is going to and claw out at Jarek again. Uh, 16 should hit you, I believe. Yep. Damn. And she's going to do eight slashing damage to you. Yeah, Jarek's uh, looking pretty bloody at that point.
Um, and I think as she follows through with her attack, as she's going to claw into you, um, you are going to see as she, like, sinks into the ground, and she's going to disappear as she kind of falls into the ground. What are y'all doing here? Well, first things first, uh, Taryn is going to use his uh, rings to turn on the light. <laughs> I forgot I could do that. So I get 10 feet bright light from me and 10 feet dim light further out. So 20 feet of light. First 10. So as you start to shine light through this area um, and kind of for the first time start to actually recognize that all of these little bundles that you thought seemed to be like herbs and kind of pleasant things that a druid might collect are humanoid bones, things like um, finger um, phalanges, like the actual like finger bones. Uh, they're all in tiny little bundles, and you can see signs that they're like wrapped up with a natural uh, kind of stringy substance that pretty quick to kind of recognize it's probably sinew um that's created from like ligaments and things from creatures there's like eyes that are kind of like wrapped into little bundles with hair um everything in this place that looked wholesome at one point is very clearly disgusting decrepit and kind of very foul things and as you kind of look about this place um, you've walked into a horrendous place to be. Everything still seems to be stone. Um, you've got a little bit of movement, and you have um, an opportunity to do something with your action, if you would like. Darren's going to march over to Jarek and pat him on the shoulder and give him a cure wound. Jarek will nod gratefully. Are we kind of like still an initiative at this point or? Um, on some level, yes. Right now you all are still in initiative. So right now I've got like bonus action from Taryn. I've got a little bit of movement and an action from Darren. Yeah, then Taryn would try to look for where the hag disappeared and see if he could find like a trap hole or she escaped. Uh, you could do a perception check. So as you kind of, like, take to a knee to, like, investigate the ground that the hag, like, fell through, this is solid earth. Whatever this creature did, it passed through this wall. Its ability to pass through this ground is not normal, and it is certainly magical. Yeah, then... Taryn would, like, look up at the others and relay that and just go, do you think she ran away? Jarek, uh, still breathing heavily, still, still, you know, still bleeding pretty badly and uh, kind of looking around, uh, kind of eyes brought over to the seeing the stone. He's going to kind of just, like, look around, move towards the center of the room, looking around kind of desperately to see if there is anything catching his eye that might offer some sort of uh, other escape route or maybe like trying to um, test the stone trying to like essentially like shove against it see maybe it's I don't know maybe it's an illusion or something or maybe it's not as strong as it looks roll of perception Like testing the stone and feeling for things. No, this place is turned to stone at this point. Um, it's not simply an illusion. It is a magic that has changed the kind of fabric of this room um, and kind of closed everything off. Um, effectively, it feels like 
magic was used to lock you all into this location. And so Jericho kind of not not finding any sort of uh, any give to it. He's going to kind of look back, uh, start to look a little wild eyed at this point again, kind of almost like panting like he's he's, you know, he's claustrophobic. He doesn't like being trapped in here. Um, and he's just going to be like, we need to get the we need to get the hells out of here uh, to the others. Yep, right behind you. So after just a few moments, you all have like, you know, essentially those five or six seconds kind of pass by. Um, and um, there's just a moment where like uh, Darren's still kind of in the process of healing Jarek. Taryn and Jarek are kind of investigating between the ground and the actual stone around you all. And in just kind of that blip of a moment, the walls are going to return to how you saw them before. Um, as this place seems to be like an actual like wooden hut again, um, you're going to see that everything in this place is uh, like kind of rotted as if like, again, this is now wood again instead of stone has been like 50 or 60 years have passed. Um, and uh, like all of this wood around you is kind of like showing signs of being near crumbling and kind of near like structural failure. Um, but within that kind of instant, things are going to switch back. As far as seeing the things that are still like kind of quote unquote decorating this place, it is still very like much like bones and creatures that have been um, effectively like turned into little like um, fetishes and kind of very evil looking things. Um, but it's just going to kind of like blink off where everything, oh shit, everything kind of returns to a level of rot. Um, and you all can walk outside. Yeah. So Jarek, as soon as, as soon as there's an opening, he's going to, he's going to like dart through and I think he's gonna kind of wait for wait for the others to fall out, and then he's almost gonna like like very angrily turn back towards the now once again kind of wood crumbling structure. He's just gonna start, um, kind of slashing out at it in anger, like essentially like destroy some of the hut. Uh, like yeah, I mean, if you're spending just like a round attacking it, you can make you know two attacks with your artifact and then one with your sword. I don't see any reason why you couldn't basically wreck it with those two attacks alone. Let alone that your short sword is so much better than Chris's. Yeah, it seems to be it seems to be working for him. Yeah, well, like I said, my short sword was defective. There was something wrong with it. But yeah, Jarek's like, he's just, he's angry at being trapped and he's almost like panicking still, like kind of lingering effects of the claustrophobia. So he's just like uh, trying to like smash this thing down. Again, once the others are out of it. Yeah, I got you. Um, so you guys can kind of clean up this little bit of a situation. Um, doesn't take you long to effectively, like, find the rest of the adventuring party. Um, and you can kind of continue on your fleeing from the grungs. Darren, if I forget, remind me next time. No more ladies in the huts. A polite but firm refusal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so far we got two for two. Old ladies in huts in the jungle having bad business. So, yeah, I'll, I think we should be more cautious about that. Um, so Jarek is also kind of once they're out of the hut and once they've been able to get to uh, get back to the other, you know, he'll he'll sheathe his weapons and he'll take a little bit of time to sort of patch himself up a bit more uh, with his uh, healer's kit, kind of stanching some of the uh, slash scratch wounds from the hag.
and he will look to the look to the to Darren and, and Taryn as he's kind of doing that to see if they um you know if they look like they they're requesting a healing. Darren's got a bit of a bloody nose and would appreciate it if there's healing to spare. And Taren, yes, no. Oops, sorry. no, go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. I was going to say, Taryn will be looking a bit banged up, but he would go like, no, he's fine. At least for the moment. All right, so Jarek will take some more time to uh, tend to Darren. Make sure those off, uses off here, and then he'll uh, he's like, let's 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 get the hills out of here. Let's keep going, and he'll uh, move to uh, push north again. Wants to get the hell away from this uh, remains of this hut here. I'll roll around the D6s for me. Was that from all of us or just Yarek and Darren? All, all of you. That's why I said the round. Okay, yeah, sorry. So, uh, from Chris C. Edward. I think uh, if it makes a difference, I would assume we're still moving at a fast pace at this point. At least Jarek is. <laughs> now, more space uh, between here and yon. Darren's right behind him. Uh, yeah, so I think you all could put another good bit of distance between yourselves and uh, Dungerlung. How long do you expect to keep moving versus what's your goal here? Uh, so I'm thinking we want to put at least, um, I don't know how... How long it was until, or I guess you know, you said it was already past nightfall when we reached the when we came upon the hut, right? Um, so you all would not have broken, um, Kurt out until after nightfall. So you oh, all are right. pushing yeah. deep into the night here. Um, that's probably like two to three hours beyond when you basically basically abducted Kruk. Yeah, I think uh, Jarek would want to go for at least another hour after the uh, after the hut. I don't know how many miles we can cover in this uh, terrain in an hour. Um, but he'd like to get at least like a couple miles, so however long that would take would be his uh, suggestion. So, having traveled for two or three hours, how does everybody feel? Uh, Darren would say to go even further than that if we can, if it's productive, and then just have a late morning tomorrow. I mean, I feel Darren would probably be getting pretty tired by now. Having walked pretty much the entire day, then Dungrelung, and then this. <laughs> Yeah, maybe try to see if we can find a some place that looks like it might be a, a decent uh, kind of hidden away place to to try and camp for the night, and then maybe uh, yeah, I mean they're all they're all pretty tired, so maybe it is maybe we do need to uh, you know we need to stop at some point, so maybe it's better to just try and camp for the night now. So is that the thoughts? Kind of slow your pace and start to look for a place to shelter more than that you are trying to put distance behind you? Uh, that'd be Jarek's, uh, Jarek's vote. Darren's good with it. 
yeah, and Terran's definitely good with that too. So let's go for survival from Jarek and Darren. And then a round of D6s, please. It was on the wrong side that time. Man, my dice today. Uh, so as you all are traveling in this generally swampy kind of area here, um, you're putting pretty solid distance between yourselves and um, what you expect to be where the grungs would be coming from. Um, you have at least enough that you could kind of find shelter underneath some trees that are effectively just inside of this forest. And they seem to be just a little bit better of a shelter that's kind of like ready for you to sleep in the crook of a tree. Um, or you all can move a little bit closer to the actual like stones of that massive area that you were kind of initially moving around on the south end of the river Tariki. Um, and basically moving away from that kind of mountain area that kind of blocked your direct path. Um, but you're kind of like on the east side of that at this point. So you can either go towards like that actual cave area and hopefully find some overhang or kind of sleep in basically like the crook of some trees um, where you have effectively like the branches overhead and the fact that it's just a tree in the jungle. Uh, what are y'all thinking? Jarek would be... He would prefer to have something solid at his back. Um, so he would he would suggest they try and, you know, if they can find an, an overhang near the uh, near the cliffs. Rather than risk being a greater risk of being surrounded in the more kind of open jungle area. Darren's used to sleeping in a tree, but he agrees with Jarek about the safety point. Yeah, uh, Taryn also agrees. That sounds like a good idea. Gotcha. Uh, so when you all are ready, you can kind of make your camp uh, near the stones of that kind of little, like, mountain um, monolith. And... Uh, Basically, set some watches here. Um, who would like to watch first? Uh, Jarrett can offer to take the first watch. Um, and again, like, there's a certain level of you all can split up the watches however you would like. Um, effectively, after two watches, Rin can watch the other two. So it's kind of up to you all, like, how you want to separate everything. Do you want to double up on specific watches? Do you want to have people who are watching with Rin? Um, what kind of thoughts do you all have? I mean, Jarek also kind of knowing the, knowing some of the um, kind of uh, powers of his new blade would offer to it. It'll, it'll mean he he'll be. He'll be, uh, he's not going to get a lot of sleep, but uh, for the, you know, potentially the better safety of the party, more or more alertness of the party, he'd be off, he'd offer to do a, a double shift. That's a mighty kind offer. And then, uh, so like we would still need to cover, uh, it for flavor, Darren would hang out with Rin. In the second part of it. And Jarek would be like, you know, be relying on probably be relying on you tomorrow to get us uh get us through here, Darren. But uh he'll kind of gesturing to the the hilt on his belt like this thing seems to uh you know have some sort of sense when, when danger is close, so as long as I can stay up. So 
So your goal is to like short rest basically, um, and burn hit dice. For Jarek, yeah, but he he he'll he'll forgo a long rest to try to again kind of use the uh, ability of a sword to try and let the others get a um, a fuller rest. It's probably mechanically not that sound, but it's more for kind of the flavor and kind of his, you know, what he would do. So who do you all want on the first watch? Uh, I think uh, Jarek, I mean, Jarek could offer to take the first two watches, and then, like, if Rin is going to... I mean, if you're going to do this, I think you should burn your hit dice and at least get up to, like, hit points before you go ahead and do that. But you are most oh. welcome to take the first two watches if you would like to. Oh, I got you. Five so... people, you shouldn't have a tr have trouble taking the watch. And I fucking hate elves, but you've got an elf with you, so she needs four hours of meditation, and then she can watch. Such a stupid racial ability. <laughs> but, like, you guys have it. Use it. I gotcha. So have somebody take the first watch so Jack can at least get in a short rest. Yeah. Um, I gotcha. That makes sense. Uh, Darren will... I mean, Darren could take first watch. No problem. Either way. Do you all want Island to watch with Taren? I mean, he's more than welcome to. I mean, you guys decide. What do you want to do for watches? Okay, so me and Island first, and then Derek second. Gotcha. Yep, that's that's good. Uh, you all doing light, no light in the camp? Well, Taren would if we don't have a, a light source, like a campfire or anything. He would use his rings. To at least get a little bit of light. Yeah, Jarek thinks we we need to risk it, so we at least have some, you know, more uh, visibility. Uh, it's raining, but you all are underneath a little bit of shelter where, um, presumably, you could make some sort of fire. Do you want to try to make fire before everybody beds down? Yeah, I think Jarek Jarek would want to. So let me get a survival from at least Jarek if Darren wants to help. Um, you can roll a survival. So yeah, you guys can basically set up a fire um, before you actually bed down. Um, so let me get a perception from you, uh, Taren. So we got Taryn and Island watching right now, right? And then Darren, Rin, Eric, Eku, and Crook. Alrighty, so while you all are on watch, Taryn, you are very quickly going to recognize um, as all around you, oh, Island on this point is kind of going to see this as well. Um, all around you, like the plants um, that are surrounding this little cavern that you all have bedded down into. Uh, the, oops. Let's fix that a little bit here.
But like that looks pretty good for kind of what you guys can see. So that random just like brown splotches, just what we're calling the little cave that you guys are sheltering up against. Um, and while Aylin and Terran are on watch, uh, you all are basically like you've got everybody behind you who are sleeping and resting. Technically speaking, Jarek, you are not sleeping. You are taking a short rest here. Um, so you don't actually get to use those hit dice. Um, but the sword as well will kind of like come into your mind as you're just kind of like just not necessarily fighting to stave off sleep. Um, you are certainly in an exhausted state. Um, but the sword is going to kind of like come across your mind. Danger approaches. Uh, and Aylin and Taryn are going to recognize as all of the kind of living organic matter around you all is going to start to kind of writhe and grow. These trees are getting larger and kind of closing off this area as it seems almost like the forest around you is weaving itself together um, and kind of cutting off effectively a circle around yourselves. What are the three of you doing? So, Jarek, as uh, as the sword kind of warns him, he's going to kind of shout out, trying to wake any of the others who are uh, still asleep or who have already gone gone to gone to sleep. Um, probably. Uh, and otherwise, uh, drawing, um, drawing the the magical blade, by moving to shake uh, Darren awake if he's asleep. All right. So I mean, effectively, if you're trying to shake Darren awake, you can shake Darren awake. Um, we're not necessarily going to have you all with everybody this match again. Um, it's far too many NPCs for three characters. Realistically, Darren, if you had your your sidekick, I would have you guys rocking out sidekicks right now, preferably than the whole party. Gotcha. Um, which I do need to get you and your sister on top of actually creating your backup characters to where we know what your sidekicks are. And it's far more just an idea of what they are than actually having anybody made. Um, so yeah, you can go over and you can wake up Darren. Um, and you're just drawing the one sword? You're not drawing, you know, both of them effectively? Uh, I can't yet draw two with a single free action. I gotcha. I mean, yeah, that's kind of a vague... And I figured he was kind of, he was getting ready to sleep, so he didn't, he wasn't immediately as ready. Like, he'll draw the second one on his next turn, but around, but whatever, but... And I feel like he wouldn't be drawing both as he's going to wake somebody else up. He wouldn't want to accidentally be drawing his blade and stab it into Darren as he's shaking him awake. My eye! Well, it would definitely wake up the person you're trying to wake up. <laughs> Just a little poke. A little soft poke in the, you know. And Taren would go, as Garrick is waking up Darren, he would go and just summon his blades and say, oh, and once again, the jungle is trying to kill us. Do I need to roll like a perception for waking? No, nah, if he's actually shaking you too, you're fine. Guy can't get no rest around here. Daryl will unwillingly draw his sorry carcass up to fight. You can certainly sleep if you'd like. You don't have to wake up for him. Well, now that would be being rude. Ah, I've had people say, yeah, I'm unwilling to wake up. And I'm like, all right, you're still sleeping. So be careful saying stuff like that, because I'll take you for it. I feel like I had Jastin do that in an old campaign. It was just like somebody was trying to wake up. I was like, nope, I'm going back to bed. 
Yeah, like if that's what you want to do, you 100% can. Nah, he's just going to grumble about it a little bit. That's all. Although I think with that one, it was just noises. It wasn't like we're under attack. So. Uh, let me have you all roll your initiatives, please. Um, Darren, roll initiative. Uh, six. Uh, so what is Jarek doing? Um, you have this like plant growth kind of like ruffling all around you all and kind of closing in this area. Um, makes it hard to figure out why the sword is warning you, except for the fact that at present the sword has warned you and whatever is going on with this plant, right? With the plants right now is certainly uncanny. Yeah, so are the plants more kind of like enclosing around us, or are they starting to move towards us, the plants? Um, effectively, at this point, it is more that you guys are kind of blocked into this area. Gotcha. So um, Jarek's going to kind of draw his draw his second weapon. He's going to like, looking back like quickly to the others, like... Um, you know, uh, some sort of, you know, there's the danger here. Shouldn't get, uh, shouldn't get blocked in, and he's going to move forward um, and trying to peer into the um, distance below him to see if he can catch sight of anything. Uh, roll thinking. a perception check. Yeah, it's going to move out like 10 feet, so I guess that's... But he's fire blind. Yeah, at this point, between like the actual like growth around you and kind of how distracting it is, kind of being startled into like an adrenaline moment, um, you're certainly not picking up too much more than again, kind of like the uncanny magical effect that is kind of displayed and how these plants are closing off around you all. Um, it's a very claustrophobic feeling. Yeah, that's also partially why he's moved, trying to move out of there. Um, but that, assuming that perception check was in action, that will be Jarek's turn. Gotcha. Um, and that will take it to Terran. Yeah, just knowing that everything's out there. Taryn is gonna follow up basically with Jarek. Gonna go yeah. next to him there. And then just hold an attack. Yeah, he's gonna hold an attack in case uh, any plant creatures or other that it's not any in my party comes up attack gotcha realistically it's attack the first thing that's not your party yeah you you don't get a chance to make like the judgment call whether it's good or bad okay because the other option is basically wait for something to attack like somebody in your party and you'll attack it or wait to see something and you'll attack it Then I'll, I guess I'll hold an action to see, like, if anything comes up to attack, yeah, Jarek. So I'm close to him. I'll gotcha. attack that. So attacking a friendly creature, you're going to attack it. Um, are you basically looking for something to melee attack, or are you going to throw a weapon? I'm going to melee attack. Gotcha. Do you realize, like, kind of how limited that space is, basically? It's almost like yeah, a single thing. square. Yeah, that's basically a east. Yeah, no, I'm, can I change that? Can I go throw instead? All right, gotcha. Um, and that will take us to Darren. What would you like to do? 
Uh, Darren would like to also come up next to them and draw his weapon, uh, and I don't want to activate it with my bonus action yet, but can I, like, hold my bonus action plus action to, like, shoot a light arrow? Plus, the answer is no. Okay, I didn't know if my quiver, if I could do those things with my quiver. Okay. Readying an action is quite literally readying a specific action. What are you looking to do? Uh, I will do the same thing then that Terran is preparing to do. Uh, if there is hostility towards Jarek, I will fire. Gotcha. And where were you moving to? Up and over by them. Pardon me. Alrighty. So, um... As you all are kind of preparing in this moment here, um, one of the first things that is going to happen is a creature is going to uh, leap from up above, and it is going to land right behind Darren, and it is going to slice into him with a dagger. Good job. Um, a 18 should hit you. And it is going to deal seven piercing damage to you. Oof. My bad. That is a 17 to hit. Still should hit. And it's going to do six piercing damage to you. Um, And I need a constitution saving throw. Solid. Uh, the next... Let's just get these. Oh, yeah, that doesn't bode well. Um, That'll set shit off, though. Um, another creature is going to slam down from up above, and this one is going to attack, attack Jarek, so the two of you can release your actions. Uh, Darren, yours will be at disadvantage. Let's see. If I'm throwing mine... Does it... Oh, yours I... also will be at disadvantage. Yeah. My bad. But it's still so like... So you cannot sneak attack. attack. No. Uh, so hit four, six piercing here. Um... Do, 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 do. Uh, your blade will just miss it, Terran. Roll a d4 for me, Terran. On a one, it's gone beyond the 15-foot range. Gotcha. So part of why I say that to you, you can return that with that, what is it, the bonus action to summon it to your hand? Yep. Oh, I didn't actually even attack with the creature. Um, So this one as well is going to dagger into um, Jarek, and it will miss. Uh, Another creature is going to kind of fly down from up above you all as it will dagger into uh, Jarek and also miss. And then the last one is too far away to also attack Jarek, but it is going to land down in front of Taryn and slash out at him. That one will hit with a 20, and it is going to deal uh, four slash or four piercing damage, and I need a constitution saving throw from uh, Taryn. Yeah, I'm just going to guess. The four temporary age point is gone by now, right? <laughs> Uh, that was from Jarek. I think, Jarek, yours is for 10 minutes. Your rally. I wonder if Justin can hear it. 
Uh, sorry, I was just uh, looking. Um, it actually doesn't have a time on it. Gotcha. Nope. So that would remove that. Your constitution saving throw is good, so you should just be at your normal hit points then at this point. Okay. Nice. Um, and then it's going to go to Jarek to respond um, as these first four of these creatures are kind of plummeting down around you all. Um, obviously, you all can notice that one of them is green. Two of them are kind of like a yellow orange. Um, as far as you all know about this culture, greens and blues are... Um, no, I said that wrong. Greens and purples are their warrior class. Yellows and oranges are kind of their elite class. And like reds and blues are their casters. Uh, so Jarek is going to kind of uh, a bit uh, startled to see these things actually just landing in front is going to turn and slash and start slashing at the one, the first one that attacked him to his north. Solid. And then uh, attacking uh, the Hold on one. a second. You've got a crit here. You are somebody who can add damage dice. Do you want to do a maneuver? Uh, yeah, I guess uh, that would make sense. Um, I'll do another... Uh... So the first one is the actual maneuver based on what it is, but for the actual damaging, you'll roll 2d8 here. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah, I didn't realize it also doubled those. So yeah. Um, yeah, that's effectively like a um a paladin smiting. Like when you get that crit, you pretty much want to throw a maneuver that deals damage at him. Gotcha. Thanks. Um, I will go with a goading strike on that one to my north. Gotcha. So he wants to attack you, and it's like a wisdom saving throw. Uh, he can do a Wisdom saving throw, DC 15. If he fails that, he has disadvantage on attacks against others, but there's nothing that compels him to attack me. Gotcha. But kind of like narratively, that's kind of, I think, the idea is to get him to goad him to attack me because he has disadvantage against others. So but it's not like a free damage. Um, that should put him into the bloodied condition. Um, and just... Uh, Slashing out at him again with the second attack. Um, and that will just hit. And then stabbing into him again with the short sword as a bonus action. And he'd be like, as his goading attack is going, he'd be shining like, you know, Come on, you up jumped pond hopper. Kruk looks at you um, judgingly. All right, so the one more green one is going to land in front of you, Jarek, and swipe out at you with a dagger. Um, that one should hit with a 20, and it is going to deal five piercing damage to you. And I need a constitution saving throw. Um, and then one is going to land from above behind Taryn, swipe out with its dagger, and a big ol' miss. Um, and I think that is going to go to Taryn. Alright, then I'm gonna bonus action to retrieve my... Uh... Dagger, and then I'm gonna attack the one that Jarek just attacked. Uh, 
Uh, that will hit, and what is that for? H19, that is going to kill it. Yeah. Um, any movement from you? Otherwise, I believe it's going to go to Darren. Yeah, it can go to Darren. I'm just going to stand my ground for now. What do you have in mind, Darren? So I was just wondering about my Horde Breaker. Uh, are green and orange dissimilar enough that I wouldn't be able to use Horde Breaker on them? Or is it like grun or grun so I can attack to it? I think it, it says enemy. I think you just need a hostile creature. I don't think Horde Breaker... What's the language okay. say? Yeah, pardon me. It says I can make another attack with the same weapon against a different creature. Okay, I got it mixed up about what it was being specific Doesn't about. Doesn't even have to be hostile. If you want to hurt Jarek, you are perfectly welcome. I'm to not hurt gonna Jarek. hurt Jarek. Uh, but you can. I'm gonna take my short sword, or no, my, no, my short bow, please, and I'd like to shoot the orange and green grun south of Terran, and I'd like to use my bonus action to make that a magical bludgeoning arrow. So it'll be at disadvantage, but shoot for the gold. Okie dokie. Uh, that is going to miss. And then the Horde Breaker. Which is well, we'll miss. And that's my turn. Uh, these two are going to... That's all in the same moment. Um, they're going to leap down out of the sky. Uh, you all are going to see as they land down in the area where you all are now standing right in front of Jarek and Taryn. Um, each of them are going to wince in pain as they land uh, and then strike out to the first one against Darren. Um, 13 misses, I believe. You're at AC 15. No, you're AC 13. So 13 should hit. Oh, these are not that good, though. Wait a second. Yeah, it's an 11, so that is a miss. Um, and then the next one swiping out at um, Jarek will also miss. Uh, so the one that landed just south of uh, Darren is physically um, mortally wounded from landing on whatever injured its feet. I'm um, going to go back to the top of the order there. This one is north of Darren. Let's see who it's going to attack. Going to go for Jarek. Swiping out with its dagger. It should hit with a 21. And it's going to do uh, four piercing damage to you. Um, and I need a constitution saving throw. Um, and then, let's see, one of those. So this one is between Terran and Jarek. And then the next one is just on Terran. Um, it is going to leap across. Uh, that one, too, as it lands behind Jarek, it is going to strike out at Darren. Um, but it's the same thing where you're going to see it kind of wincing in pain as it lands. Darren, I will need a constitution saving throw as it hits you, and it will deal seven piercing damage to you. And I think the other one was attacking... 
Jack. Um, um, what is that? 18 should hit Jarek. Constitution saving throw, please. And it's going to do six piercing damage to you. Ruh bro. Um, more poison damage. And you are going to take eight poison damage as it Oof. cuts into you. Yeah, Jared, Jared's not looking so hot now. <laughs> um, and it will be on Jarek here. All right, so Jarek, uh, seeing the one uh, kind of landing and wincing in pain, open to catch it off balance, is going to slash out at the grung south of Darren. Uh, that will kill that one. And then kind of like whirling and seeing the, I think the other one that landed kind of awkwardly was to his southeast, right? Um, directly south of you and directly north of you. Oh, okay. Uh, so he's just going to, as he's like, as he slices that one down, he's going to turn to the one right beside it and continue attacking. My bad. Which one was this on? The one directly south of him. Gotcha. So that second one will hit for another nine. Um, and he's like, uh, yeah, he's uh, Jarrett's kind of wheezing and uh, bloodied up, but uh, he's just uh, holding his ground. Um, so the one south of you is now bloody and mortally wounded, um, and it's going to go to Grung north of Terran. I think it's just going to attack Terran. Big ol' miss. Um, this one is southeast of Yarek. I'm just going to attack him. Big ol' miss. And I think that is going to... Yeah, I think for the first time you will see um, one of these blue creatures kind of stepping into this area, and it has got a bow at the ready, and it is going to take a shot at Darren. Uh, you'll have plus three AC for the combat kind of in between you all, and I do not believe that it's going to be a hit. It has a plus five, so 15, and you're at 16 right now with a plus three. Correct. Um, and that will take it to Terran. Okay, that will Terran, seeing it. The one who just jumped over him and attacked uh, Derek, he's going to take a stab at that one. So the one left of me. Solid hit for 22. Yeah, and then he's gonna bonus action the same thing. So. And one more hit for just another little bit of damage for three more. Uh, but it will leave that creature bloodied. Um, anything else movement-wise from Terran? No, not at the moment. He's still... 
I'm going to go swinging on the ones. That will go into Darren. Uh, I would like to use my bonus action to draw a light arrow and shoot it towards the blue grunt in the distance there. Does that count as an attack, or does that, like, render it just a light source? Um, I am pretty sure it is just a light source, but you still have to roll to hit. I think I have it worded as such. It doesn't specify it's not an attack, but I'll I'll just take it as my... Uh, you're going to hear a thunk as it hits the creature and just bounces off. Hmm. Does it still illuminate the area over there? I mean, he's already in the light, so nothing really changes. Okay. Uh, that's my turn. Gotcha. Um, it's going to go to... See, this one is directly south of Jarek. So um, it is going to swing out at Jarek. A big old miss with a ten. Can go back to the top. This grung is right above Darren. Uh, he is going to swing out at Darren. Uh, 13 hits. And he will do 5 piercing damage. And I need a constitution saving throw from Darren. Um, and Darren is going to take six more poison damage. Oh, no. Um, let's see. This grung uh, just south of Taryn is going to attack Taryn. Uh, big ol' whiff. And then the grung north of Jarek is going to attack Terran. <laughs> 12? What is your AC on Terran? 15? Big ol' miss. Uh, and I think that's going to go to Jarek here. So right now you've got a mortally wounded grung to the south of you, a bloodied elite grung to the north of you. Uh, there are four effectively uninjured grungs in that mix, and you've got your first sight of what seems to be their shaman um, off to the east of you all. What is uh, Jarek doing? Yeah, so Jarek is uh, slashing out at the mortally wounded grung below him to try to finish it off. Solid hit. I believe that's going to be a kill. Yep. And turning as he, you know, whirling around, slashing down at the grung above him, the wounded elite. Um, you don't have the one that lets you add to your attack, correct? Um, I am allowed to. You, uh, what do you mean? That adds to your like roll to hit. No, no. All right, good. Now I delay so much. That is a miss. I delay like so much against battle masters, assuming that they have that. 
You know, the only maneuvers I have right now are the the rally one, the good temp HP goading and disarming. Gotcha. Um, and he's gonna follow that up with a uh, his uh, short sword. Short sword, same guy. Yeah. Solid hit. Uh, that will put him into the mortally wounded condition. All right, and he's uh, yeah, that's uh, that's all I can do. He's just hacking and slashing away. Uh, this guy is north of Terran. Gonna swipe out at Terran. Gonna be a big old miss. Next one is south of Yarrick. Going to swipe out at Yarrick. Uh, 14 misses. And it's going to go... Let's see, the archer is going to shoot at Terran with a 15 to hit. I think that meets your AC. Yep. I did this. D6 plus 3, he's going to do 6 piercing damage, and I need a constitution saving throw from you. And you are going to take an additional 6 uh, poison damage. And then it is on Terran. Well, Terran is looking a bit worse for wear after that, but he's going to attack the mortally wounded elite. Get the kill on that, hopefully. Are you applying sneak attack? Uh, no, if I can withhold that, I am perfectly willing to withhold sneak attack right now. Hopefully gotcha. Can... So your first attack is just going to be a normal attack? Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so it is still mortally wounded, um, but that is going to survive. Ah, damn. I was hoping you could get it down. But then I'm gonna bonus action and apply sneak attack then. That one's gonna annihilate it. Yeah. Um, any movement from you, otherwise it is on Darren. No movement yet. Mm. What would you like to do, Darren? I'm gonna go ahead and take my short sword and slash at the guy north of me twice. Uh, first strike will hit 4-5. The second one's going to miss. And I'm going to hunt mark him for my bonus action, and that'll be my turn. Um, I mean, besides, like, forgetting, is there a reason you didn't Hunter Mark him before you attacked? It was just because I forgot. Roll a d6. Appreciate you. Roll a four or better. He's gonna die. Woohoo! Uh, this is the Grung to the east of Jarek. Uh, let's see. Um. 
Yeah, he's going to step away. Um, he is moving away from um, both Jarek and uh, Terran. Opportunity attacks from either of you? Yep, Jarek will slash out with his uh, scimitar. Yeah, Terran will also attack with his... Uh, Jarek will miss. Ten with a solid hit. Four, nine, seventeen. Um, and as the creature leaps off into the distance, you'll see it wince in a little bit of pain. 23? I don't think it could possibly kill it, but... Uh, so that one is going to leap away and kind of off beyond the shadows. Um, Jarek, what would you like to do? You've got one creature alive to the south of you, and one to the north of Terran, and then one off to the east. Yeah, so Jarek is going to, like, uh, looking towards the, almost like pointing his short sword, like calling out the the grung with the, the blue grung with the bow as he moves and slashes at the grung below him. Um, as you move through this area, you, oops, that was too much. You're going to take six piercing damage as you feel the earth below you, like, stabbing up and into your feet. Ouch. Okay. Yeesh. Uh, slashing again, then at the kind of, he's, like, stopped in his tracks as he feels those things, like, piercing into him. He's going to slash again at the same growing below. Um, that first one will take it to mortally wounded. Um, second one, still mortally wounded. And he's going to follow up with the short sword bonus action, kind of turning his attention away from the blue. He's going to be shouting out, like, where the ground to the others. Yeah, and that's going to kill it. And he's going to... No more movement, so that's him. And he is looking severely rough at this point. You stupid little grung. Uh, this last little grung um, to the north of Terran is going to slash out at him. Um, 18 should hit. I need a con save from you, and you're going to take five more piercing turn. Um, and then these last two are leaping out and, um, outside of this, like, plant growth that is surrounding you all. Uh, thoughts from Terran. What are you doing? They are far enough away that I can't see them by now, right? Yeah, as soon as, like, that wall around you all, I know it's not necessarily circular at this point, is effectively, like, where the plant growth has basically created, like, a wall of kind of natural fibers. Yeah, then I am... Um... Yes, can I stay... Good for now, seeing as Jarek warned us about the ground. Well, we've seen that people have been hurt by walking, so I am not taking my chances. I'm staying still, uh, taking the dodge action for now. Gotcha. Uh, and what is Darren doing? Darren's going to stay right the heck where he is and uh, slap a level 2 cure wounds on himself. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, I feel like we are going to end this combat here, right. um, as a few minutes go by, um, before, let's see, it's kind of weird, you can't actually see where spike growth is.
I guess eventually you all could, like, perception-wise be able to spot it. I actually kind of missed there is a line that there's a perception check to spot where the spike growth is. Um, it's not purely hidden. Um, but, whoops. Um, eventually you guys can kind of spot, like, where it is and kind of recognize holding your ground is, um, like, on that some level safety. Uh, before about 10 minutes are going to go by before the spike growth basically dissipates at your feet. And by that point, you guys are still inside of this cocoon of the growth, like, all around you for, I believe that one is another, like, five minutes beyond that. Uh, so, you all are in this same moment. Um, you... I didn't even notice I didn't even change the color on that thing. Um, so it looks like the mountain. Um, so you all are kind of cleaning up this moment of the battle. Uh, the forest all around you um, kind of continues to be in that like super growth rate um, for the next uh, good bit of time. Like it's not necessarily as um, like fear inducing now that you've kind of met some of these grungs and at least sent them off on some level. Um, but you all are still effectively in a location where they know where you are. Um, there's little around you that is not kind of evident of this growth um, as the jungle is kind of like growing closer and closer in uh, towards your little uh, cave system here. But you've defeated the initial grung attack. Uh, what do you all have in mind as you are kind of picking up the pieces here? Darren would like to, once the thorns are gone, walk over to Jarek and Taryn and high-five them. And give them cure wounds. Level 2 to Jarek. Isn't it still kind of a low 5, though? I mean, it technically, it's a it's a high five for for Darren. I mean, it would be a high five, high five for me. Darren's gonna make him jump for it. He'll hold his hand just a little too high to. No, oh, Darren looks at him rather sternly and then jumps for it. Yeah, for Darren, but just Jarek... be a regular high five. <laughs> but Jarek looks very grateful at the uh, as he casts the uh, cure wounds on. And he's kind of still kind of limping around, definitely still looking pretty haggard. Um, he will um, kind of similarly waiting until the until the growth is gone. He would uh, carefully try and maybe just uh, check the bodies of the elite grungs. It's presumably the, the weapons they're carrying are probably fairly crude, and he'd want to be careful not to... Um, touch like the any of the blades or anything but he might, might just like look to see whether there's anything on these things roll a invest uh, roll a perception for me There's no good way to ask this. And I'm tempted to force you to take it. Is there any hesitancy in Jarek to touch these creatures? He He's got an 8 intelligence. I don't think he would be he'd be he wouldn't be thinking that uh make a constitution know. saving throw. Yeah, he'd be wary of the weapons, but he wouldn't be thinking like, oh, maybe their skin is, uh, unless it's something that, yeah. So as you start to move their bodies around and try to even get kind of like remotely close to these things where you start to contact them, 
uh, you're not having any truly adverse effects, but the very same kind of like burning, um, poisonous, it's really hard to distinguish poisons and acids. Um, to me, I feel like poisons, you almost need to describe them still as that kind of burning. Um, but you have a very similar reaction to uh, touching these creatures as to when they would cut your flesh with their weapons. And it's going to become pretty clear pretty quickly as you start to move around the first one's body that whatever effect all of their weapons have when they wound you is because they seep this poison from their flesh. Um, effectively, as far as like the meta knowledge of this goes, grungs are poison dart frogs come to life, like conscious. So these things really just have to like basically like put some of their own like sweat onto their weapons and it poisons them. Do we think it's, does Jarek think it's the kind of thing that could be not harvested, I guess, but like essentially get like if he took out his own dagger and kind of just wiped the blade of that on the skin of one of these things, like was, I guess he wouldn't have any idea like how long it would last. It would probably evaporate after some time. So, and then given the danger and the risk and how hurt he is, he probably wouldn't wouldn't chance it. You could certainly try. One thing I would say about maybe not doing it to your dagger is that quite often in these times, people had a knife that was effectively your fork and your knife, like for eating. Um, and that's where I would say, like, probably the biggest danger of that goes. But as far as everybody goes at this point, like, there's no reason Jarek can't kind of share that information as it, like, burns your flesh. Like, all of you have these creatures right now. You don't know how long it'll last for, but you could certainly apply some poison to your weapons. Yeah, you know what? Actually, maybe instead of his dagger, he would try it with one of his, you know, he would try it at first with a, uh arrow. And then um, probably maybe with a couple, uh, some of his arrows, try and just like kind of like kind of, again, like scraping them against the skin. And then, you know, again, not sure if it's going to do anything, but uh, also so they have like a, they have like a slimy, I think profusion is kind of like the word for when your skin, like, um, it's not emulsifies. I feel like that's as you're like digesting stuff, but they basically have like a slimy fluid, like, protective barrier around their flesh um not like from their blood but you can start to like basically run your arrows through that uh they don't seem to have any adverse effects so if you do an arrow or two um you have a pretty good sense that you could do your arrows uh yeah he would do uh he probably do if he can um, a quiver full of them, so 20, or however many he can. What are Taryn and Darren doing as Jarek kind of shares this information? Uh, Darren just is going to keep an eye out on the tree line while Jarek is investigating the bodies, just trying to keep an eye out. And Taryn, what are you up to? Taryn is actually going to go back to Eku and Kruk and ask Eku to translate to seeing as they are the same people as Kruk. If she wants to give them some kind of burial rights, or if she's okay with just leaving them there. Uh, so between Kruk and Eku, um, 
you're gonna see a certain level of Kruk definitely seems concerned. Um, isn't entirely sure kind of how to approach the situation. Um, you can see certainly a certain level of um, almost kind of like a self-doubt or like a little bit of fear or recognition uh, that her choosing to leave is in part um, kind of what is happening here. Um, like that they came after you all. Um, she'll notice what Jarek's doing. And kind of um, at some point between Eku basically come to the conclusion, like, when he's finished, I'll dispose of the bodies. Um, and Kruk will kind of just, like, sit almost, uh, like, pensively, um, kind of watching over the next few minutes until Jarek finishes. Um, and I think Jarek also, like, as um, as Taryn is going over to speak, he, he'd be, like, saying to Taryn, um, maybe ask uh, if she thinks they'll keep coming after us, if, if uh, maybe they'll cut their losses. So we probably need to keep moving, though, once we're done here. Did Der Jarek take first watch or second watch? Did we get through part of the night? Oh no, that was the first hour. You guys have cool. not even cool. technically finished like the first hour of your night. Um, right. It is still very much that same night. Um, I don't think Kruk is going to have a positive answer for you about whether the Grungs will keep coming or not. Um... I think her response would probably be kind of pensively on it depends uh, if uh, Malkaric and she'll kind of say that and it'll kind of like take a moment for Eku to figure out what it is before she recognizes like that's basically naming the druid who came forward um it depends on how the druid approaches the king um effectively how they report back to the king and how personally slighted the king considers things Jericho, or, or once, I guess, that would actually be told to Taryn, because Jarek's busy. But uh, Well, I mean, it's effectively being, like, said in front of you still. It's still, like, that translator, like, Taryn's asking Eku, Eku asks uh, Kruk, Kruk responds to Eku, Eku responds to Taryn, and they're ten feet away from you. So it's not like it's an incredibly secretive conversation that you can't apply um, these arrows to the body and still have that. Okay, gotcha. So Jarek will suggest that they, once they're kind of um, done here, maybe we try and keep moving a bit, and uh, he can, if uh, they need it, he can um, use another of his, another of the Schwinga's charms to uh, give them, a, at least some of them, a bit of a respite. I think at this point, with the sidekicks, we might actually have more than nine. Yeah, I mean, technically, you all should have all five sidekicks with you. So you should have a 12-person party right now. But uh, otherwise, maybe we just... Try and find some place to lay low and hope we can get through the night. Or whatever's left of it. Yeah, see, that's kind of like a silly factor. I feel like this is where I need to like actually actively have like the ethereal bartender who like opens the door into the other lands. And if you guys are gonna be running three, we have the sidekicks come out 
of the tavern, and we have Eileen and um, Rin walk into the tavern. I think that would be one of those things that at least functions better. I don't. I don't want to get rid of the sidekicks, but this is one of those situations where it needs to be on you whether you make that choice to use that resource. Um, it shouldn't be like, oh yeah, it's not even effectively of a thing. Like you guys have expended everything, and that's quite literally what that comes down to. It's like we're in one of our most dangerous situations. It's time to use it. Um, yeah, I mean, so. Jarek's definitely, definitely willing, yeah, to use it. Suggesting it's probably a good idea. We were still, we're pretty, we're pretty battered up, battered here. Yeah, so I think very least we should at least consider the idea of it's either the seven of you here or the eight of you with like the three of you having your sidekicks and Eileen and Rin are gone with their sidekicks. Um, I think that's kind of how we have to play this. I've been thinking about bringing back the ethereal um, bartender for a while because it really is a cool, it's much better than walking around with somebody's character and using them for them. And that's quite literally what the sidekicks are meant for, is when people cancel. Um, so, if you want to move away from this area, you are certainly welcome to. Um, what, are, what is everybody else thinking as Jarek says, maybe we should move from here and then rest in a safe shelter? Taryn strongly agree. Yeah, Taryn does too. Doesn't really seem safe to be staying where we are. Gotcha. So the plan sounds that everybody wants to move forward and kind of continue um, north and hopefully put some more ground between yourselves. Yeah, I think... Instead of going like for again for a faster pace like we were doing before, maybe we try and move more stealthily and if possible have like someone in the back trying to disguise our our tracks. Um so we can get some distance but try and focus more on trying to avoid making making it too clear where we've gone. But essentially, I'm thinking we're we're heading, continuing north. Unless we think that might be, if they knew we were headed north already, maybe we choose a different direction for tonight to try and, you know, camp. Mm, I think north is probably fine. More distance instead of... Because, like, we, we tried to cover our tracks previously, and they still hunted us down. Uh, yeah, perhaps. Yeah, perhaps you're right. Perhaps, I don't know how deep their territory extends, but perhaps they're, if we get far enough, they'll be less familiar with the surroundings or something. But, yeah, in, in that case, uh, north sounds fine. Uh, so let me have, uh, um, whoever is leading, um, can roll a stealth, um, whoever's kind of in the center can roll a stealth, and either Jarek or, uh, Darren can roll a survival. Uh, I can have Jarek, I'll have Jarek roll the survival, I guess, because he'd probably take the lead again or not no no survival is the follower oh oh gotcha okay i'll still have him do a stealth so there hello sorry i my discord crapped out gotcha can i get a stealth from you uh taryn 
Oh, wait, I guess how long were you gone for? Just like a moment? No, I was gone from, I think, let's see, from when we were deciding on how we were going out. Like, gotcha, we okay. Still, yeah, yeah, I think we're we still um, kind of fleshing that out. Um, but basically, if I can have you roll a stealth, um, Jarek and you are kind of pushing forward stealthfully, um, and Darren is kind of following up behind, trying to kind of clean up the situation. And then let me have the three of you roll a d6, please. Uh, so you all can push forward into the night uh, as you kind of make your way um, off to the north. Um, again, like the initial effort of getting through uh, the growth around where you all slept is quite strenuous. Um, it is quite insane to realize after the fact how thick all of that growth got and you could actively feel while you're trying to walk through it that it was continuing to grow um and as you all kind of progress uh you have a pretty good feeling that you're staying rather stealthy as a group here uh you have a pretty good feeling that you are able to cover up the tracks behind you um, but you all can put some time behind you. Uh, everybody at this point will be suffering from exhaustion. But in the long run, are you all prepared to bed down for the night? What are you thinking as you progress in another hour to the north? Yeah, Jarek is, uh, after an hour, he's, he's ready to uh, kind of camp down. Would we incur any more points of exhaustion if we continue, like, through the night? No, it's more that you all are basically into the next day, where by now you should be sleeping. Yeah, well, Taryn is also happy if we could get a rest. Um, Darren will look uncertain for just a second and then agree with them and bed down to you. So Jarek will kind of, uh, once it's once they've agreed to kind of um, camp, he'll kind of gather everyone kind of close together um, and get ready to kind of use the cast the spell. So, with the summoning of the tiny hut, you all are in drastically different conditions here. Um, you are perfectly welcome to keep a watch, uh, but you also have a vague understanding that nobody else can get into this hut as long as Jarek remains within it. Um, what would you all like to do as you effectively shield everybody from the world around you? Yeah, and Jarek would also try to make it, uh, in terms of coloring, kind of like blend in as much as he can with the surroundings from the outside. Yeah, effectively, it's one of those things where, like, without somebody specifically knowing where you were when you cast it, it's pretty difficult to ever spot one of them. Um, there's no reason that you can't, like, find, like, trees to basically create it under so it's not easily visible. Um, but in the long run, it is still findable. Um, but yeah, they automatically kind of um, blend themselves in. It's very much like how we um, have stealth clothing these days, where it can like take a video effectively from behind you and in front of you, and it scatters that like it like projects that light onto the actual clothing to create effectively like a little invisibility field. 
Gotcha. Okay. I was, I don't know, for some reason in my head, I'm like, I'm picturing like a, a, a like a single color, just like dome, which is impenetrable, but visible potentially. But... Well, one of the biggest problems with how people use Liaman's tiny huts is like, if it's snowing outside, snow will fall on top of the dome. If leaves fall from up above you, they can fall on top of the dome. And a leaf floating in the middle of the air, not falling, looks odd. Um, if it's raining, the rain will fall and hit the dome, and somebody will be able to see it. So it's easy enough to see. Uh, I think we talked about like your other party that you're inside of a dungeon and people who use it. If you've got a dungeon that's 10 foot wide and somebody casts the tiny hut there, nobody can walk through that hallway without finding out that there is a magical device here preventing them from moving forward and it's really easy to camp and wait for a party to wake up and be like up oh, and you're surrounded uh, and that's exactly what happened like she used it and we had just killed like a whole bunch of bad guys and she's like okay we need to rest we need to rest it's like maybe we you know this is only a, this is a finite area like if we give them eight hours to search they're gonna find us and then it's, and it's exactly that like okay we get eight hours in but then we wake up and there's like 50 you know, yeah, the creatures. entire dungeon should be on top of you if you sleep in a dungeon in a tiny hut. Yeah, and she was like, uh, she was like a noise, like, I told you exactly this is going to happen. <laughs> um, anyway. So, are you all going to leave a watch previous times you did? Or previous time? Yeah, Jarek will suggest we, we still keep a watch, like, um, you know, explaining, like, you know, as long as we stay in the Stay within this area, they can't get through, but, you know, we should still uh, keep an eye out. And he's going to retract his earlier offer of keeping a double watch, because now he definitely needs uh try and get a full rest if he can. But he will offer to take the uh, first watch. So, effectively, you all have enough people to have two watches doubled up and two watches solo. Um, and part of how that works out is it's regardless of whether it's Rin who's solo um, or whether it's, you know, two of you who are actually here that's solo, um, you know, one of you who's solo and then Aylin who's solo. It's kind of up to you all. But who do you want on the first watch of the five of you? Jarek will offer to take that uh, solo. Gotcha. Uh, let me get two perceptions from you. Uh, so nothing is going to happen on your watch. Um, who would you like to wake up for the second watch? I will wake up uh, Darren. And Darren would bug Rin to hang out with him while they're on watch that time. Gotcha. Let me get two perceptions from you. Uh, nothing will pass by for those two hours. And who is Darren going to wake up? Darren will check with Taryn first. See if he wants to get Island in on the last one or the third one. No, Taryn can take third watch. That's no problem. Uh, do you want Rin with you? I mean, if she's not going. Rin yeah, can, can yeah. finish her meditation or. Rin can watch with you and then meditate after. Yeah, then she can watch with me. Gotcha. Uh, let me get two perceptions from you. Uh, nothing will transpire through that. And uh, neither will anything happen on island. Uh, so you all can wake up 
fresh on the 17th of what is it miracle in this campaign kithorn uh still exhausted though right for now Did we cure that you all would cure that exhaustion by sleeping I think that's a better mechanic than I feel like it's by not sleeping, you gain exhaustion. But if you don't necessarily sleep, when is it applied? Um, I think basically once you get into the point where you were sleeping the night before, exhaustion. Which is essentially usually like by like 10 to midnight-ish, exhaustion should set in. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. But everybody can click their long rest, make sure um, to confirm it. And otherwise, how would you all like to start your morning? Can we very stealthily and quietly try and assess if anyone has approached our camp? Uh, Island can confirm for you all that at present it doesn't seem like there's anybody out there. Um, if you would like to do something beyond, you certainly can. Now I'll take Island at his words and just ready up with everybody as the morning goes. Uh, Taryn would actually like take like on the edges of our camp. Just take a look around, see if for footprints or anything. Uh, roll a perception check. Uh, doesn't take you much more than a few minutes to spot that there are indeed footprints people having passed through here. You are a thief, Rogue? Yep. Feel like give me a uh, investigation and advantage here. <laughs> so as you are looking over these footprints, uh, you are pretty sure that you see the signs of probably six humanoids. As you look through it, you're pretty sure you see one person who's walking very light-footed, um, seems to be kind of prim and proper. Um, almost all of their footsteps are like the exact same distance. They have very nice shoes on. Um, and kind of like, as far as you're concerned, like as a thief, this is one of your targets, like on a regular day-to-day -day basis in a in like an actual like city you can tell this person kind of like carries themselves with a little bit of authority um there's one person who has a much heavier footfall uh their boots certainly um sink deeper into the actual like mud and kind of swamp around this area um very nice shoes still but not necessarily um kind of like I feel like it's an entirely terrible word, but I feel like keep thinking like prissy with the first one, but not necessarily like prim and proper um, as the first one. This is perhaps like a little bit uh, still kind of like a reserved kind of gait, um, but the person definitely kind of carries like a little bit more weight with themselves. Uh, there is another set of foot tracks uh, that you very, very keenly pick up on but they are extremely light. Um, this is somebody who is very quick on their feet, they are very agile, and they are certainly at home in the woods um, and the, in these conditions. Um, and you have a pretty solid understanding that they walk in front of everybody else, that the others are following that person. 
Um, and then there are two or four other people who seem to be in the actual group. Um, and they all have heavier footfalls. Not heavy like the person who's wearing like the actual boots. Um, but these others seem to be um, a little bit less civilized kind of thing. They've got shoes protecting their feet. But a very loosely spoken shoe. It's more of like a moccasin. Um, and that's where you can kind of see that there's like five or seven people in this trail. You can tell that the one person who's like the prim and proper probably walks at the back or towards the back. Um, the person who is most light footed kind of walks towards the front and the person who is heaviest footed um, also kind of walks towards the back of this party. Um, let me get a survival from you, Taryn. Um, they walk through at some point in the night, but it doesn't seem like there's any signs that they stopped and recognized that you all were here. All right, then I'll relay that to everyone. Yes, so they know. And then I go, well, I'm back in camp. The uh, the idea of who they might be. Sounds almost as if it could be a. Uh... Let me get an intelligence from everybody. Taryn, you have a pretty good sense that this could be an adventuring party, and it could very likely be an adventuring party who was sent out by somebody like Syndra, or it could just be a party of people who were, like, passing through this area. But part of what you can kind of identify is signs of somebody who might be lightly armored and banks on their wizardry. Somebody who's heavily armored and a formidable figure, f formidable figure to face. Somebody who is light-footed and perhaps more of an archer. And a few people who are a little bit more brute fighters. I think one thing that does isolate is it's probably not somebody um, like the... Um, Damn, Firebrands comes to mind. The Flaming Fists. The Flaming Fists, everybody is a soldier, and they all have, like, their uniforms. You're not going to spot those, like, two or four people who are walking around in moccasins. Hmm. Did, um, did Taryn, did, did, was Taryn able to discern if they were traveling in a particular direction? Apologies if I if I missed it in the when you were telling him. No, I don't think I got any direction. It's more like it. Um, they, were there. they were crossing your path, heading to the southeast. Okay, southeast. So if you all are. Perhaps, I think I've got you on, oh, my bad. I'm like hanging out on the map looking at things. Um, if you all are vaguely around the actual stone structure still, I mean, I think realistically you also know like kind of north of it. Let's go for, if you all are vaguely on like the northern portion Kind of the stone structure somewhere in that general area, um, roughly halfway between Dungerlong and Firefinger. Um, 
you have at least a sense of Damn, I hate how hard that map is to read. Give me one second to pull out my other map to look at the name of that river. But it looks like they're kind of heading towards that river, um, perhaps even towards um, Taz Muhaha. Oh, the river, was that Olung? Yeah, Olung sounds right. So they could have been passing in this direction to basically get to the Olong River. Um, perhaps they've left the River Tariki behind. Um, they could have been passing in this direction to go towards uh, the Ataz Muaha. Um, it's kind of hard for you all to like pick up too much. They pass through your camp, vaguely going southeast. I'll uh, imagine we should uh, keep on our own way. Uh, what do you guys, what do you all think? Yeah, I think we should be, yes, trying to get away from the grung. See if we could get somewhere where they won't chase us at least. Yeah, tally ho. Vaguely still heading north, basically, trying to make your way still towards Firefinger. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and then towards there, and then we'll cut, uh, you know, start heading east towards Mesro. Uh, let me get a round of D6s from you and survivals from uh, Jarek and Darren. All righty. So as you all kind of push forward here and start to uh, make your way to the north, uh, you're going to make pretty solid progress uh, for the first good kind of part of your day. Um, before about kind of like early to midday ish, um, you all are going to come upon a small clearing where there are corpses of undead creatures. You can see some of um, these kind of like um, almost like. Uh, rotting humanoid creatures that seem to be like almost very juicy um, and still kind of fleshy. Um, some of them are more like bone-like and far more like aged. None of them seem to be moving. This like field seems to be pretty recently trampled. Um, and these creatures seem to have lost whatever happened here. Um, but as uh, like realistically, you two are still leading kind of side by side. So as the two of you kind of like make this recognition um, that this little clearing ahead of you seems to have been a place where undead lost some sort of a battle, what is crossing the mind of the party? Where is she? Where's the creepy old lady? There's got to be one. There's bones. I don't think there's a creepy old lady here. I think there's <laughs> more. Maybe they caught the bad end of a dinosaur or something. Jarek is wondering if perhaps these undead ran into that uh, 
that party that uh, whose tracks Taryn found, and he'd like to get a, uh, if he can, try and get a closer look at uh, a couple of these creatures, see if there's any way to tell what felled them. Gotcha. So you're going to move into the clearing and take a look? Roll a perception for me. Um, so, as you kind of progress forward, are either Darren or Taryn following him, or are you two kind of sitting at the edge and just kind of keeping an eye on Jarek? Taryn would be following, keeping, well, watching his back at a closer range. And Darren would like to hang back and keep an eye on the perimeter and their backs from farther away. Gotcha. Let me get a perception from the other two, then. Darren, can you roll a perception, please? Pardon me. My dice. So, as you all kind of move forward, um, Jarek, you're going to kind of take a moment to investigate one of these creatures. Are you going for one of the more, like, fleshy creatures, or one of the more, like, bony creatures? I would say the fleshy creatures, because Jarek figures they might be more likely to show evidence of wounds. Gotcha. Um, So, as you come across uh, the first of these creatures that you go for... Um, there's definitely a horrific stench as you get close to it. Um, you've encountered these creatures on a few occasions here. Um, these are some of the more fierce creatures. I believe they took out... Damn, I can't think of his name offhand right now. Um, the Marcus? Outside... Yeah, Marcus, outside of Camp Vengeance. Um, this is pretty clearly one of those creatures that, like, they infect the creatures that they bite into. Um, or rather, they infect creatures that they claw uh, and bite into. Like, their stench is part of how they almost attack. Um, in that they um, are very kind of um, fiendish creatures. Um, and once somebody is infected with their particular poison they will feast on that creature almost like innately just knowing like this is the weakest target get it um so you recognize the creature from that i don't remember what you were doing that day um because i feel like it was marcus and island who were outside of the actual camp at that point um, but regardless, you do recognize this creature, um, meta knowledge wise, this is a ghoul. Um, as far as when you get close to it, you can see signs of arrow wounds in the creature. Um, and it's not going to be much past when you actually recognize that this thing was felled by arrows, uh, that Terran is going to notice that this particular clearing is still occupied. And inside of the trees all around you, Taryn's going to spot little signs of people kind of moving through the trees. Uh, what is your thought as you see this, Taryn? I'll ch- try to whisper to Jared, like, Jared, there's uh, people around us. Be on your guard. Jarek will try to give like a, a very small nod to try to indicate that he understands. So what are you two doing as you now recognize that you're being watched? I think Jarek, uh, having kind of seen what he's uh, seen what kind of what he can from the body will kind of uh, step back up, assuming he kind of like was like leaning down to, to check it. Um, turn back, uh, 
and start heading back towards the edge of the clearing, uh, back towards where uh, Darren was. And assuming Taryn is following suit? Yep, I'm following suit while trying to keep track around us. See if anything's happening. You can roll another perception check. Um, you can tell that the people in the trees are kind of moving with you all on some level. Yeah, but they haven't taken any overtly hostile action yet, so so far so good. Yeah, realistically, you're seeing like basically like flashing movements of like legs through the trees. Um, you are seeing signs of these people, but barely seeing signs. Jarek's gonna whisper to Taryn, uh, we, uh, try to make contact. I'm gonna seem hostile and killed, uh, killed these, uh, these foul things. They hopefully can't be that bad. Honestly, I feel like if they want to Come out, they'll come out. As long as they're just keeping themselves hidden. Then I'm fine with that. Jericho will nod uh, very well. And he'll just uh, continue walking, I guess, back towards the edge of the clearing. Wait, like if you already went back for Darren, where are you going then? He's technically like at the edge watching for you all. Oh, I sorry, I wasn't sure if we had already reached there. If he's if he's already gotten to the edge of the clearing, then he'll kind of just like pull up with Darren and Taryn and see kind of what they what they think we should go next do next. I would, yeah, I I would say it's was... a pretty small clearing, so the idea like it wouldn't necessarily take you long to, you know, like kind of cautiously or rather try to casually walk back towards Darren. It would take you just a few moments. Gotcha. Okay. So what are y'all thinking when you get back to Darren? Like, were you saying those things to him to let him know? Or are you all, like, turning around to, like, basically cross this clearing? Now, Darren would ask if everything is good and cool and if we want to stay here. And having gotten caught up, uh, would recommend moving along the sides of the clearing? Well, yeah, Taryn would have told Darren about what's going on, but I think that it would probably be safe to just go through the clearing, seeing as they didn't do anything the first time around. Kind of thinking them. You think they might be Emerald Enclave? They were pretty stealthy first time we met them. Should we go trying to look particularly peaceful? Do you know of the Emerald Enclave? You're just going to hear a voice from the trees above you. That uh, town was sorry a little bit. Uh, oh! Oh, really? There? Okay. Uh, yeah. We met a couple of them in our early days of exploring the jungle here and it seems to have gone well 
yeah, they were friendly enough and we'll try to keep as they say to not harm the jungle in, in a specific way, not harm the natural order. The uh, river snake, I believe, was uh one of those we met with. She um gave us some helpful guidance uh for our travels. I was just trying to look for their names. Like, I feel like I gave them a name. Yeah, I was also trying to look through my notes, but they are far back. <laughs> I'm not aware of this, but that is unsurprising, perhaps. Have you done well keeping to the order of things? We have, uh, tried. I don't believe we've done anything that would, uh, give a reason to, uh, Nothing to disturb the surroundings unnecessarily. And we have had Eku guide us too, and I think she would have told us if we were doing something completely wrong. Uh, does Jarek believe that when he says it? I think so. I mean, he's not sure about the whole thing with the rungs. Um, but like we, you know, I mean, to his mind, we've, you know, we've defended ourselves when we've had to, but we haven't really initiated unnecessary fighting. And does Taryn believe it when he says it? There is one occasion where he's kind of iffy. The Terra Folk so, that we so hunted for. Let me get a persuasion from Jarek and Taryn, you can decide whether you want to roll a persuasion or if you want to roll a deception. Recognizing that if you get caught rolling a deception, it's worse than if you get caught rolling a bad persuasion. Yeah, like, I feel like that's a clutch thing for people to recognize. Like, if you're trying to be persuasive, there's next to nothing bad that can happen. You can just be bad at persuading somebody. But if you're lying to somebody and somebody picks up on it, they know that you're lying. Good time not to lie as I roll in that 20. Oh, no well. It seems that fortune favors us all once again. What, pray tell, are you passing through the realms of the undead for? Uh, and you're going to see as a few more figures kind of reveal themselves. Um, and at present there are um, five of these individuals, all of them, again, very much uh, skyclad. Most of these individuals are effectively nude. Um, all of them seem to be carrying bow and arrows. Um, one of them in particular is carrying a staff uh, that seems to be like a living elder tree. Um, not like rooted, but like seems to be um, far less like I don't know, like, um, stolen from nature, but that this staff is, like, kind of still a living tree. We have been, uh, tasked with trying to investigate the... trying to find a, if possible, some way to cure the death curse that 
sits over this land and we are hoping to find some useful information in the ruins of Mesro. That is where we are headed. Um, the next few minutes, they're going to kind of clarify what direction you all are going. Are you basically, you're going to start to pick up that they are recognizing you are going towards something. They're not naming Firefinger. Are you all going to come out and say that you are going to Firefinger first? Um, you can kind of like sense this level of they're picking out information about where you're going and you can kind of tell that they don't necessarily like they I don't know if I'm describing that well they're kind of picking at things without saying you're going towards Firefinger um, while also questioning perhaps you're just kind of lost and not going towards Mesro on accident um, does anybody actually share that at present you are going towards Firefinger? Okay, so I may be misremembering things. I kind of thought we were using Firefinger as a landmark, but um, as opposed to like going there with the intention of doing something there, but I could be wrong. Um, me, the player, I mean that. Gotcha. What does, uh, what does Chris, Taryn, or Cam Darren, what do you all think about that kind of question? Didn't I'm we... sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, I was just thinking I missed what the question was. Sorry. More or less, like over the next few minutes after um, Jarek brings up that you guys are heading towards Mesro and you are trying to like find some sort of solution to the death curse, these people are going to kind of like um, pick apart with many different questions. But they're kind of like dancing around this idea that it seems clear you guys are not heading in the direction of Mesro. Um, perhaps it's not on the map where you guys expect it to be and you're going in the wrong direction like that. It's more a question of like, are any of you going to bring up that you are using Firefinger as a landmark to get there? Uh, Darren's definitely taking a lead from Taryn and Jerry because he is unfamiliar with these uh, sort of folks. So he's going to stick with the idea that we're just, you know, on our way to Mesro because it's certainly not a lot. I think uh, uh, a history for me. You can have advantage. I was going <laughs> to. Oh, sorry. Just the first one. You're vaguely sure that the Emerald Enclave is effectively a group of itinerant naturalists. But you don't necessarily know a whole lot about them. Well, Darren isn't bashful. Uh, he definitely, as a hunter, he's the kind of guy to respect nature, but uh, will kind of just keep his keep his opinions to himself and let Jarek or enter and decide if they want to reveal more. But And what is uh, Taryn thinking right now? Taryn is actually going to reveal quite a lot. He's running his mouth a bit here. Seeing as the other ever Emerald Enclave people we met was friendly. So he doesn't really sense any kind of danger. So, <laughs> when Firefinger comes up and that you all are heading in that direction, they're not going to tell you not to go there. They are going to warn you. The place you are going to is an ancient landmark. Unless you have business that you must go there, there is very much danger to be found. For the Terra folk have taken over this mark against the land. 
and they kind of have like a little conversation in uh druidic um highland knows elvish rin knows elvish yeah i'd say it kind of escapes most of you all um as they have this little conversation Um, and then they're going to kind of respond, um, kind of coming back into common. When uh, we keep an eye on the stones, we have spotted anywhere between 20 and 60 of the Terra folk there at any given time. Well, you are welcome to follow your way to this land. Perhaps you need something that is there that we do not know of. But if you go, go with all secret that you have, utilize darkness, utilize the rain, and be quite weary. If you cannot fly, We'll teach you how. And you all know how the Terra folk tried to teach Island how to fly. Yeah, that is not a lesson I am eager to try. They would be Ooh. able to share with you that Firefinger is about 300 feet tall. Oh yeah, that is definitely not a lesson I am eager to try now. Uh, Jarek would ask, like, if they do, they have an idea of how how widely they range, how widely the Terra folk range out from the spire itself. Like, can we? I'm sure it will add time, but perhaps we can skirt their territory and still get where we're where we're headed, ultimate destination. So the conversation will include effectively from the pinnacle of Firefinger. Let me put it to a die roll. Effectively, the last time the Emerald Enclave took Firefinger back, um, they have stories of people who were able to see the peaks of flame from the peak of Firefinger. That you can see the Aldani Basin. That you can see Mesro. Um, effectively, what they end up kind of telling you is from Firefinger, you can see pretty much the entire peninsula of Chult. There's nothing that you really can't see. Um... To answer your question a little bit more along the lines of the Terra folk, they tend to range 20 to 40 miles away from um, their roosts, which effectively kind of tells you, you guys are already within, I think that's vaguely probably like a 40 mile circle on this map. Um, I think it's about 30 miles between Dungerlung and Firefinger. I think that's what I measured out. I can check my map to confirm. Um, but they also kind of warn you, like, there's not really anywhere in Chalt that Terra folk don't roost. Firefinger is just a spot that is almost like a stronghold for them because most creatures, it's so dangerous to climb that high that it's basically indefensible. Like, even when the Emerald Enclave would take it back, it's pretty much inevitable that the Terra folk will eventually take it back from them. Yeah, so I guess it's actually kind of like 60 miles to Dungerlung. Um, the view is clearest for about 20 miles. So... I 
feel like that's probably a pretty solid idea of the way they describe this to you. You're approaching where it is most likely to be seen. You are within where it is entirely possible to be seen. Um, and for this entire time, you could possibly be seen, if that kind of makes sense. But, like, if you guys don't see, like, I have you on this map, right? The Peaks of yep. Flame is all the way to the south, where you all understand Omu is, is between the Valley of the Lost Honor and the Peaks of Flame. Omu is somewhere down there, as far as the purple uh, fairy dragon kind of told you. Um, so the distance that these things can see is astoundingly far. The difference is, is it's still usually still very tropical here where there's almost always some rain. Um, and there's almost always heavy rain at some point during a day. But that's kind of what it is. Like the clearest day you could see the peaks of flame. So Jarek will uh, thank the thank the Emerald Enclave for that information. Sounding like perhaps we should uh, be a bit more um, careful on how we how we travel. Perhaps travel at night. Wait for wait for times with heavy rainfall and otherwise hunker down and try to avoid being spotted if we're going to be continuing on trying to get through the thickest of their territory. Uh, as the uh, guys are being very open with their information, Darren eventually like loosens up and starts being very polite and uh, happy to speak with them and agrees with Jarek about uh, being more on the DL as we approach Firefinger. Takes time to thank the Emerald Conclave for their assistance. 